<clears throat> Randall, sitting here looking at you in your coat and shirt and tie, do I dare tell them you have your shoes off? <laughs> is that, is that <laughs> unfair? <laughs> do you sort of uh, sometimes wish, gee, that you were back on that island? All the time. Do you really? Yes. As a matter of fact, I'm going to move to Hawaii right after this movie is released. So I can live like that all the time. And what about movie making? Oh, I'm going to write there, I think. And then wherever I write the script for, I'll go and shoot the film. But I just fell in love with the tropics. I just, after doing Blue Lagoon, um, and there's just there's no other place I'd rather be, really. At times, though, because of the hardships, Randall, didn't you uh, feel sometimes that perhaps the movie was a little bit in jeopardy? No, no. As a matter of fact, it went very smoothly. Even though we were living on an island that was very remote, and we were living in a city of tents that we built, we dug a well for water, we put in our own plumbing and showers, uh, it went so smoothly, it was unbelievable. There were a lot of things that could have gone wrong, but uh, the, the behind the scenes turned out just as well as the in front of the scenes did. Uh, it was just like a, a wonderful experience. Yeah. Were you able to stay on schedule and within the budget? Yes, we were. I, it's amazing. I think there's some kind of magical thing happening when we made this film. And I don't know if it'll ever happen again on another movie, but we had a group of uh, filmmakers in their 20s all working on the crew. And it was like a vacation. And everyone was completely into what, what we were doing. They loved the script. And they uh, loved the environment. We would go swimming a lot and snorkeling, scuba diving on our, on our days off. And even on our days on, we were doing that you know, in between takes. Because we would wait for the light to get right, and so we'd take time off to just have fun. Of course, Nestor Almendros is somebody I have just enormous respect, if not awe, for. Mm -hmm. um, the underwater scenes, I know that he wasn't directly involved with those, but I would like to talk about those underwater scenes a little bit. They were done by Ron and Valerie Taylor, who photographed Blue Water, White Death, and part of Jaws, and they're very, very well known all over the world for being uh, terrific underwater cameramen. And the way we worked was, I would give them uh, little sketches, storyboards of the of the images that I would w I wanted them to get, and Valerie would take like Brooke or Chris wearing s the goggles, and they would swim underwater uh, through coral so that so that they know where the coral was, and then they would uh, go back, take the goggles off, and do the same um, path so they kn knew vag vaguely where it was, and they wouldn't bump into it because when you're underwater, you can't really see totally clearly but they knew where to swim. And Ron Taylor, her husband, would be down on the bottom of the um, uh, ocean with his camera, and he didn't wear a, a, a scuba uh, uh, tank. He'd just held his breath, and he'd go down there, and he'd be down there for about three minutes. And he, when he came up, he'd surface, and he'd go, Psst, let's do it again. Like that. I mean, he's like a human, uh, he had, like he has gills or something. I, I, I couldn't understand how anyone could hold their breath that long. Wasn't there some a bit of uh, risk, though, uh, with sharks and other varmints down there? <sighs> well, you know, it's funny. Um, uh, Ron and, and Valerie saw a shark there, and rather than being terrified and running away, they, they took Chris down there and said, hey, uh, do you want to try riding a shark? I didn't know this, but they told me later, and I wasn't too happy about it, because if I had lost Chris, I would be kind of up a creek. But um, they took him down there, and uh, he swam down and grabbed hold of the shark, and it just took off, and he, he was too frightened to hold on to it. But they have no fear at all of sharks, because sharks apparently, according to them, are more interested in eating uh, the abundance of tropical fish that are around there. All I have to do practically there, since there's so many fish, is just swim along and open their mouth and they get fed. So why bother with a human? What is it, in your opinion, Randall, about Nestor Almendros that separates him from most other cinematographers? Well, for a start, Nestor hardly uses any lights at all. He, he uses nature to light. Uh, we built some sets uh, in Fiji for the interior of the ship, and we, we didn't put a ceiling on them. And he put silk over the top and let the sun go through and light the whole set. And uh, this is the way Thomas Edison used to light. And in the early days of the silent movies, that's how they, how they lit sets. So he was going back 
to the old ways of making movies, and what the end result is, is a very uh, natural-looking light source. At night, he would light the fire scenes with the fire light. So the interesting thing about Nestor is that he uses nature uh, as his light source. And uh, you can't do that with every movie, because if you have 500 extras and, and you're doing a battle scene and, and, and it's not the right light, you have to bring out your arcs and light them. You can't have them all sit around and wait. But since we had such a small cast, we could wait until the light was right for every sh scene. When he's getting his, um, his perspective on, on the picture, does he take a lot of time in setting up each shot? Hardly any time at all. Uh, he will just, of course, w he has to work with someone that will listen to him. I mean, I, I sort of uh, used him as my guide, really, and I said, well, I have this scene, where should we shoot it? And we'd look around, we'd see uh, an interesting way the sun was coming through some trees, and he'd say, what about there? And I said, yes, yeah. so we put the actors there and shoot there. So uh, uh, working collaboration like that, we were able to come up with uh, interesting visuals, whereas uh, a strong director who would say, I want to shoot this, now you light it, uh, then he would be lost, you know, because he'd have to bring in reflectors, he'd have to bring in lights and stuff like that. So we found that we had an incredible rapport, and I hope I get to work with him again, because I think he's one of the geniuses uh, ever in film. Nestor, for parents who see this movie, what would you like them to get out of it as far as young people growing up? I think that this is a kind of a film that parents can take their children to without any fear of, of seeing something offensive. If a child doesn't understand what's going on, it's done in such a way that uh, it'll go right over their heads, but uh, it might it might stir up some questions that they would they would ask that uh, parents would then be able to answer, rather than the parents having to tell the children off the bat where babies come from or anything like that. It's it's not really an, a sex education movie, but it's more of a love story. It teaches people about love being the basis of uh, of, of relationships rather than. Uh, a lot of things that you see even on television where where it's just uh, uh, you know sex only you think though that that parents today given today's world this country that there is any parallel between that and raising children and the the setting of the movie where it's an island and they're growing up by themselves well the children had to make their own decisions and learn on their own so there's things that you can, uh, it's very amusing, a lot of it, because, um, uh, you know, the audience, of course, knows all the answers, because they've grown up in society, they know what's, what, what happens to you. But these, uh, these children on the island didn't know anything. So uh, there's the, most of the humor from the film comes from that. And I think that, um, uh, that, that the parents and children can find that very, very funny, actually, because they, they know more than the characters do. You, of course, directed the movie Grease, mm -hmm. and is it true that you showed that to Fijian people? That's right. We flew down a print of Grease, and we showed it to these Fijians who had never seen a movie before, and uh, they, were, they were delighted by it. Uh, they laughed all the way through, and, and the, the night that we left, the whole crew left the island, the Fijians put on a dance ceremony for us, and they did their authentic Fijian dances, and then all of a sudden, in the middle of it, they broke into 50s rock dances that they had seen in the movie. <laughs> and now anthropologists, years from now, will wonder how these uh, jitterbugs got into the Fijian... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they could pick it up just watching, huh? Yes, uh -huh. and they loved it. They, they thought it was a lot of fun. That was the first really big movie you ever directed, wasn't it? That's Please. right, first movie of any kind, except television movies. Well, and the things that you had done, of course, as, as a student. Shorts, yeah, yeah, short films. Weren't you terribly nervous? Um, doing Grease was like uh, being on a roller coaster, and uh, I was going up to the top, and I knew that there was going to be a drop, and when I got there, it just started, and there was no stopping, and so, yeah, I was nervous. <laughs> what was it like the first time you ever saw the finished product with an audience? That was real fun because uh, of the laughs. You know, when you when you do it, something that has comedy, and then it works and gets laughs, it's very fulfilling. I mean, for an actor, I would think that would really be fun. For a director, 
Uh, it's a little removed, but still, uh, it's fun to sit there and hear them laugh. Randall, it's been fun meeting you and talking with you. you. I enjoyed it very much, and I hope Blue Lagoon is uh, just a blockbuster hit for you. Thank you. Nice okay. seeing you. Come see us in Texas. Okay. <laughs> I've got a real time car over next door. Let's do the interview again. And then I can come back here. Sure. Okay, questions then. Randall, this had to be a rather difficult location. Did you ever at any time feel that the film was in jeopardy? Now with all the things that you had to put up with, were you able to bring the picture in on time and within the budget? For parents, let me start over. There are going to be a lot of parents who are going to be a little bit dubious about whether or not they should let their children see this movie. What, what, if, what can you say to them? Do you think that young children should be able to see this movie? I think everybody, Randall, will be fascinated with the underwater photography in this movie. How was all of this achieved? Nestor Almendras, of course, an Academy Award winning cinematographer, they just don't come any better. But I wonder, what is it that sets him apart or sets his work apart from other cinematographers? Does he take a long time to set each shot? You, of course, directed the movie Grease. That was your first big movie to direct. Did that make you pretty nervous with all that responsibility? You showed the movie Grease to the natives in Fiji, right? What sort of reaction did the natives have to seeing their very first movie? All right. Um, well, that'll get us by. I may have missed one or two, but that'll get us by. Thank you very much.